But you will ask, how is our Lord present in the Holy Eucharist? I answer, Jesus Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained under the outward appearance of bread and wine. He is present, whole, and entire. His body and soul, his flesh and his blood, his whole humanity, and his whole divinity. This is clear from what our Lord said at the institution of this holy mystery. This is my body. That is to say, this which I hold in my hand is the same body of flesh with which you see me clothed, the same body that I have borne for 33 years, the very body that shall be tomorrow nailed to the cross. Moreover, as in him the human nature was inseparably united to the divine, he himself, his whole humanity and divinity, was contained under that outward appearance of bread. How is this possible, you ask? I answer, by the almighty power of God. Is it not as easy for him to change bread into his body and wine into his blood as it was for him to create heaven and earth out of nothing? It happened once in the Netherlands that two ladies, a Catholic and a Protestant, were disputing on the subject of the real presence. The Protestant asserted that the real presence was impossible. The Catholic asked her, Have you Protestants any creed in your religion? Oh, to be sure, said the Protestant, and she began to recite, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Stop, said the other. That is enough. You say that you believe in an all-powerful God. Why, then, do you not believe that he can change bread into his body and wine into his blood? Is that difficult for him who is almighty? The Protestant had nothing to answer. A similar argument was once made use of by a pious painter named Leonardo. He one day met in an inn two men, one of whom was a Lutheran and the other was a Calvinist. They were ridiculing the Catholic doctrine about the Blessed Sacrament. The Calvinist pretended that by these words, this is my body, it was only meant that the bread signifies the body of Christ. The Lutheran, on the other hand, asserted that this was not true, but that they meant that bread and wine, in the moment of their reception, became by the faith of the recipient, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. While this dispute was going on, Leonardo took a piece of paper and drew the image of our Lord Jesus Christ, with Luther on the right hand and Calvin on the left. Under the image of our Savior, he wrote the words, This is my body. Under the figure of Calvin, he wrote, This signifies my body. And under that of Luther, This becomes my body in the moment that you eat it. Then handing the paper to the two disputants, he said, Which of these three is right, our Savior, Calvin, or Luther? They were struck at the force of the argument and ceased to scoff at the Catholic, the Catholic doctrine. Indeed, this objection to the real presence is but a proof of the blindness into which men fall when they are led astray by pride and instigated by the devil. The devil has had from the beginning a special hatred of this doctrine. In the early ages of the church, he incited Simon the magician and the Manichaeans to deny it 
and in later times he seduced Berengarius to follow their example. But he never succeeded so well as with Luther, Calvin, Zwinglius, and the other heresiarchs of the 16th century. Luther acknowledges himself that the, Luther acknowledges himself that the devil once appeared to him in a visible shape, saying to him, "During fifteen years, you have daily celebrated private masses. What if all those masses have been a horrible idolatry? What if the body and blood of Jesus Christ be not present there, and that yourself?" adored and made others adore bread and wine. And indeed, this is not strange. The devil knows that, according to the promise of Jesus Christ, they who receive Holy Communion worthily will not fall into his power, but will obtain eternal life. And on this account, he either tempts men to disbelieve the mystery, or he suggests every sort of pretext to keep them from receiving it. But he himself believes it and trembles. Would to God that all men had so strong a faith. After our Lord had changed bread into his body and wine into his blood, he added the words, do this in remembrance of me. Now by these words he commanded the apostles and their lawful successors to Catholic bishops and priests to consecrate, to change bread and wine into his body and blood. Do this, he says. That is to say, do this which I have done, as I have changed bread and wine into my body and blood so do you also in my name change bread and wine into my body and blood. This change takes place in the sacrifice of the Mass at the consecration. The moment the priest pronounces the words of the consecration over the bread and wine, that very instant Jesus Christ is present as truly as he is in heaven and with his body and soul, his humanity and divinity. After consecration, nothing remains of the bread and wine except, except the sensible qualities or appearances. If, for instance, the bread is round, its roundness remains after the consecration. If it is white, its whiteness remains. If it has a certain taste or quality before, that taste or quality continues. And so with the wine, the particular taste, color, and every other sensible quality is just the same after the consecration as it was before it. In a word, whatever is capable of being perceived by the senses remains. But the substance, which is perceived by the understanding alone, and not by the senses, is changed. But, you will ask, perhaps, why does our Lord hide himself under the outward appearance of bread and wine? Why does he not manifest himself under the sensible qualities of his body, with his wounded hands, his merciful countenance, his radiant majesty? Now our Lord does so chiefly for two reasons. The first is that we may not lose the merit of faith. Were we to see Jesus Christ as he is seen by the blessed in heaven, we could no longer make an act of faith in his real presence. For th faith is the belief in things which we do not see. Now our Lord wishes to bestow on us after this life a great reward for our faith, as he himself has said, Blessed are they that do not see and yet believe. Many of the saints, in order not to lose the merit of their faith, 
have gone so far as to beg our Lord not to favor them with those consoling manifestations of himself in the blessed sacrament, which he has sometimes granted to his chosen servants. One day, when St. Louis, King of France, was invited to go to a church in which our Lord appeared in the Holy Eucharist under the form of an infant, he replied, I will not go to see my Lord in the Holy Eucharist, because I believe that he is present there, as firmly as if I had seen him. Let those go and see him who do not believe. Surius relates in the life of St. Hugo that a priest of a certain village in England, on breaking the sacred host one day at Mass, saw blood issuing from it, <clears throat> whereupon, filled with reverential awe, he determined to lead a holy, holier life in future, and in fact he soon became renowned for his sanctity. St. Hugo happened once to stop at this village. The priest related this miracle to him and offered to show him the claws which were yet stained with the miraculous blood. But the holy bishop refused to look at them and would not even allow his attendants to do so, saying that such wonders and sensible proofs were only for those who did not believe. And when he noticed that some of his attendants had a desire to see them, he reprimanded them sharply and said that this desire proceeded not from piety, but from curiosity, and that it was more perfect to believe without seeing. As our Lord himself assures us, Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. The second reason why our Lord hides himself is that he might inspire us with confidence. If he were to show himself in all his glory, as he appears to the angels and saints in heaven, who would dare to approach him, surely no one but Jesus most earnestly desires to unite himself intimately to our souls, and therefore he conceals himself under the outward form of bread, that we may not be afraid of him. Our great king, says St. Teresa, veils himself that we may receive him with greater confidence. <clears throat> 